Alright everybody, welcome to the Game Warrior. My name is Jason and I'm a little bit excited because Tainted Grail Kings of Ruin is here. And look how much bigger it is than the old one. The old <laughs> beautiful game that's unplayed. I was just talking with someone today and he was telling me about how beautiful, what a magnificent experience it is, how excited it is, and how much he loved that one and was looking forward to this one. And it filled me with hope because Tainted Grail, when I first started playing games again, board games again, was one of the games that I really got excited about. Like this felt like a deep, rich story that had all of the atmosphere and the magic that I was looking for. And I got it and the rules were a little difficult for me and I ended up never playing it. Oh my gosh. But Kings of Ruin came up and I was like, I have to get this, right? I have to get it. And I had a couple talks with some friends. Hey, we're going to move the camera a little bit here. And we decided to pull the trigger on it. And I thought to myself, naive, I know, I know it was naive that I would play Tainted Grail by the time this came out. I didn't. So now I have to make a big decision. I'm going to have to make the decision if I go back to the old Tainted Grail or I just start right here with King's Room. Regardless, you do not have to worry about that because this is a Kings of Ruin unboxing. So let's get at it, shall we? We'll do a little talking, a little, little discussing, we'll take a look at the miniatures, and we'll just have some fun. And if you want anything specific, like if you're watching this and you go, you know, you forgot to cover this, Jason, please tap a tap a tap a type it out to me, and that makes me get better and better. I welcome criticism, and I love sharing things I love with people like you. All right, everybody, we got the box wrapper off. Let's take a look. Let's take a look inside. This box is huge. Oh, beautiful artwork. Beautiful artwork. And what do we have inside? You know what? Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can get more of a top-down feel. You want to stick with me a little bit longer as I do this? Yeah, let's... Oh, oh, oh. Top down, there we go. Okay, on top we have a bag full of stuff. Stuff. Some of the best writing and storytelling that I've ever heard. In fact, someone today on my channel asked me, hey, what's the best storytelling out there? And I said, Oathsworn's really good. And I've heard a lot about Tainted Grail. And, uh, Those were the two big ones for me. Like, I really love a good story. Um, and so far, Oathsworn's, Oathsworn's number one. Oathsworn's number one. Okay, so we have these punch outs. Probably, they go like this, okay. Kind of in the way of the light. Let's get the light over here. And then these punch out. I think you're probably gonna put a cube in there. Huh. Okay, and we have some, let's look at these. Definitely get some more light over here so that you can really see what we're looking at. And these are the standees. Um, here's another one. Always excellent art with these, art with these guys. And the rage and the battle between standees and miniatures goes on. And so, let's kind of turn this sideways. And again, quite a few standees. Uh, I know a lot of people prefer standees. I always prefer miniatures, but I, it is hard to argue with that, right? It's both sides. It's immediately noticeable on the table. Man, one day if I become a standy person, it could happen. It could happen. Um, here is our rule book. So let's pause and take a big look at that. Okay, everybody, we're gonna take a look at the rule book. Open it up for you. We've got a component list, all the stuff. It says there's some models. Remember, Awakened Realms does not call them miniatures, it calls them models. Introduction, how to use this rule book. Simple gameplay overview, the characters. It looks like there's four characters. Innes, Eunice, Osbert, Girdwin, and Elgan. Here's your setup overview, campaign setup. Will they 
Will this be easy to play? It'll be interesting to find out. Seems like Awakened Realms is hopefully learning their lesson and making better rule books, especially after the disaster with the first rule book for The Great Wall, one of my favorite games of all time. Somehow survived that horrible rule book, and 2.0 was amazing. Really do like that. Playing the game, start of the day, during the day, end of the day, then your exploring journal, your core rules, alphabetical order. Um, the rule book is hefty. At the same time, it really looks good. It's detailed. There's combat. I remember playing a couple games of combat of Tain to Grail, the first one, and really kind of thought it was overly complex, that it just didn't need to be that way. That was my thoughts. Diplomacy, there was the diplomacy piece, I remember that. I think I missed a page there. Good folks, good folks. Yes, it's just this feel, the font, everything is Awaken Realms. This is very, very typical of their games. Diplomacy examples. Do not read anything in this chapter until instructed. Secret rules. Don't even look. Oh my gosh, the whole thing is, the, is secret. Now look at this. We have a nice index. Um, the design, creative director, who's the designer of this? This is, oh, good people. Good people. We're not going to try to pronounce their names because these good people will probably be hurt by my inability to pronounce their names. All right. That was the rule book. All right. Big higher view again. We have a start here piece. Hopefully this play guide helps. Hopefully this is just geniusly done. And by the end of it, I'm like, wow, that was so easy. Um, here is the C stretch goal journal, expl exploration journal, which doesn't come with the regular game, apparently. Take a look at that inside. This is just the kind of game that I love, but I don't play. I don't know. One day I may just have to accept that these things are not going to get played, and that's the way the world works, or I'm going to dive into them more. Uh, I just think, oh, lost chapter of the Knight's Wager. Look at these. These are events and so forth. And Okay. This looks great. I don't want to dig too much into this. Secret envelope. Do not open until instructed. Stuff like that is always fun. Here's your save sheet. Kings of Ruins status sheet. Uh, and your save sheet. And into the Miss progress sheet. Uh, character sheets. All right. What do we got? What is this? Look at that. Shiny. It's shiny. Who's a Firefly fan here? Oh, it's a journal, I think, for you to put notes in. That is pretty cool. I gotta just say, I love this style of art right here. You see that? That excites me. Oh, I love that kind of style. I think it's just a nice little journal. Uh, lost chapter status sheets, here we go. Okay, what is this? This is the big exploration journal, okay? Does anyone know, and I did do some research on this, thank you, but I'm, I think there's a fortune teller app that goes with this. I'm almost sure of it. But if you know, oh, knock the camera, don't do that. If you know for sure, let me know. And hopefully when I'm editing this, I'll know and be able to put a note in. Um, otherwise, we're gonna have to read from this big journal. Can you imagine the team that they have? I mean, someone designed the basics of the game, but then the next thing they designed was this. They had writers writing this. And by all accounts, this has been one of the best stories out there. Just an incredible story. And to put, to have a good writing, I mean, I mean, I grew up reading some of the best of the world, obviously Tolkien, let's see. Do you remember the Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks? Shannara. I met him one day and I said, I love the Sword of Shannara. And he said, it's Shannara. I was like, ooh. Um, Glenn Cook's The Black Company. Best stuff ever. Number one, I love Dragonlance by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. I was a big fan of David Eddings with The Belgariad. And in fact, I just reread that whole thing as, in, as well as The Mallorian. Remember Raymond Feist? 
I'm sorry, I'm dating myself because this is back in the 80s. Uh, a lot of old good books. Uh, I know a lot of you probably like Brandon Sanderson. They think he's a good writer. I have never finished Elenium, Elysium, whatever this first book was. I could see some good parts of it. But um, once they got in the city and everyone was dying, and it was just so bad. I just didn't like it. And I've tried The Way of Kings. My daughter tells me it's amazing. My son tells me it's amazing. And it's just so, I mean, I remember him describing a field of purple flowers and weird blooms. And it's like, oh my gosh, you're just going to make the world so different. And everyone's like, that's what I love. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what I love. I, I don't want to hear the description of every new type of tree and weed. Remember, uh, you know who's real guilty of that? This is uh, the guy who created Elminster and the Forgotten Realms. Greenwood, Ed Greenwood. Way too much detail. And here's the funny part. Everyone says, that's what Tolkien did. Go read Tolkien. That huge epic story is about 800, 900 pages. Which is now, I mean, Brandon Sanderson is, every book is fifteen or 1,200. I mean, the Robert Jordans, you know, the Terry Goodkinds, the huge novels. That's just the way they were. Oh, George R. R. Martin. And, and they think, yeah, we got to be big like Tolkien. Tolkien was compact. That huge story was in 900 pages. Yeah, go look it up. Forgotten, um, not Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, Return of the King. Hell, the half, last half of Return of the King is what? Appendixes. Did I read every appendix? Yes, I did. Okay, so here's all the stories, right? Shattered Chorus, The Strutting Forest, The Encounters. Look at the work they did. Oh, my. I mean, someone typed this whole in. Is it good? Has it been playtested? You know, is the game system streamlined? I've heard, but look at the story. Oh my goodness. This is like a life project. Like you're done. They should just quit. They're done. They go home. They they gave it. They bled from every, you know, vein. They just went, here's my story. I'm done. It's the it's my magnus opus. It's the best thing I have. I will die giving it. Or or not. <laughs> Am I being a little dramatic? You could tell me that. Here we go. Model time. Do, 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 Model time. I don't know if anybody's laughing, but I thought that was pretty funny. Here's the characters. They're little boards. Look at that art. Look at that art. This is kind of cool. Okay. So you got your typical. These just feel so awakened realms. It reminds me of Nemesis. They just have a way of designing things. Oh, look at this. There's some secret stuff to be read somewhere. Okay, so here we go with the miniatures. How best to show you these? Let's do a pause and here consider that. See what we got there. See the different light. Those are some really nice minis. You got a sculpted base. Let's pause this. Look at that. Is that a little blurry? You try to do this. It's a little, a little goofy. Yeah, those are some pretty cool miniatures. All right. Look at that guy's shield. Look at the detail on that. I don't know if you can really see that. Ooh, wow. That guy is really cool. We got some little short guy here. Get real focused on him. Yeah, these just have. A great evocative feel. Got some guy with a shield and a crossbow. Yeah, the detail of these guys are excellent. One thing I like about what uh, Forgotten Realms does, Awakened Realms, sorry, um, does is that they don't do too many miniatures. They don't overdo it. They're not Simon. Um, and, and I mean that in a good way because I do love Simon's miniatures, but what they do is that the yeah and like the there's no mold lines they're really really good looking miniatures and there's fewer of them and i do like Simon miniatures so i'm not complaining okay let's look at the bigger ones that are in the bottom of the box and, you know tainted grail had the big men here's those were the big pieces that were the stalwarts of it it doesn't look like they're using a men here system here meaning you know that they have this one Type that is amazing. Unless these are the men here, but look at that. 
Oh my, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, this makes you want to paint it and play it. Let's take a look at this. Look at this guy. Beautiful. Look at the horns on the back. Look at the texture. I don't know if you can see this. There's a texture on the cloak. The detail that goes into this hammer or scepter. And look at the little claws at the bottom. That guy looks pretty damn sinister. And their third big one <coughs> is this. Now there were, oh, look at this guy in this chariot. Now there were a lot of guys in expansions uh, and other stuff that came with it, but I just didn't go for it because if I can't even play the first one, why well, get all the expansion stuff, right? And so in this case, and as usually the case with uh, uh, Awakened Realms, I almost said Arrested Development, I keep messing their name up. Their games just aren't, so far benefited too much from their expansions. I mean, if you get the base game, it's my opinion that you're good. Um, now, someday someone's gonna come along. You know, I just got ISS Vanguard second wave. I'm like, oh, I didn't even do the first wave yet. You know, I just so far haven't needed any more contact. Just stick with the base. Um, and I think you're gonna be fine. That's my recommendation. And if any of you out there have had a second wave of uh, extra content, from an Awakened Realms game that you thought was amazing, let me know. I would love to hear it. Now let's take a look at some of the cards. All right, so what we got here are the map cards with the beautiful art, and these are how you lay them all out. And there's the ancient forest, the lake, the hills, the untrodden valley, the tombs, the main hall. I mean, these are just gorgeous. Um, they're big. I don't know if you can see how big they are. Uh, place from beyond so that suggests we're going to go somewhere beyond in our adventures and some of these are double-sided and so that's a look at the big cards all right let's look at the cards we have encounter cards combat cards diplomacy cards these look somewhat similar to what i'm used to from the other game counter cards tons of those with different colors in the bottom i have always loved the finish and feel of awaken realms cards they're unique to me they just feel different. Now, a lot of people are using linen lately. These aren't linen, but they're so smooth. And, you know, I probably should sleeve these. Dang, they're gorgeous. Look at the art on them, the story. Yeah, I mean, and you got to think of some of these companies that are putting games out lately. They're late. They're not even going to put it out. I'm really worried about Lazy Squire becoming the next Mythic. Uh, they just are obtuse, they are lack transparency, they're just, it's just crazy. You can see it. It's just, they're like, you're looking in their faces and they're just like, yeah, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah, we designed some parts of the game today, we're working hard. You're like, yeah, but you're, you're just so late. Like, yeah, the design's going well. I mean, I'm not joking, they just, and, but you... What I'm saying is, is that the scope of some of these games is amazing. And look at Awaken Realms, that they're able to put this thing together. You know, I mean, good gosh, the money it takes, the effort, the resources. Oh, we're going to look at the smaller cards now. We're going to think about that. And these are items. And again, I just love the finish of, uh, of these cards. Um, same ones from uh, Nemesis. Oh my gosh, we have Nemesis Retaliation coming, which is a game I should be learning and getting to demo at the Hot Room for Dice Tower West. So I'm excited about that. Okay, everybody, what did you think of this? It's just, an, I mean, it obviously looks gorgeous. You want my opinion? This is my strongly held opinion. Gorgeous. It looks like they put their work in. It looks like they're telling a great story. Hey, I just saw something that you might want to see. This is the side of the box. And you know what? I'm going to help you out because I love you. I love you. You love me. Do you? Seriously. I think you do. Look at that art. See, what they're definitely doing is this Arthurian legend. Uh, it's changed a little, so it's resonant to us. It's like Tolkien's work. It's resonant, but it's different. It's evocative. It's got beautiful art and storytelling. Oh. This game just has so much promise. Uh, you know, I'm just so excited. I'm just really excited. Um, and it came out relatively on time. Like, I probably didn't expect this for another year. Did I? 
I may have gotten this the same time I got Fear of the Unknown, which was the Cthulhu Death May Die Season 2 version, or the second version. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Anyways, this looks amazing. It's got a great feel, great production values. Is the rule book good? I don't know. But is the game good? Is the story just as good as it was before? Um, and again, I haven't played it. This is just the stuff that excites me. And so if it excites you, I would love to hear from you. And if anyone, and I did talk to some people recently who played Tainted Grail, Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon, and they loved it. It was such a great experience that they're really looking forward to Kings of Ruin, as am I. But will I play it? Because downstairs on my kitchen table right now is Primal. And I don't know when that's going to leave because it's kind of like hogging the table, hogging the table. Now, I won't be playing it for the next, I'm going to play it for a couple days. But once I go to SaltCon, I'm not going to play it down there. I don't know, maybe I'll take it down there. I bet I get a lot of attention if I do. If I were one to seek attention, <laughs> that's funny, because I'm doing videos and I'm getting attention. If I were one to seek attention, I would take Primal to SaltCon. That's interesting. Um, but I doubt I will. But if I do, I won't play it too much. I'll play so many new games, right? And then the week after, I go to Dice Tower West and learn a whole bunch more new games. So Primal and certainly Kings of Ruin are off the table for a while. Um, and maybe when I get back, we'll dive into it. I've also, looking over here, have got Euthia. I've also got Heroes of Might and Magic. I've got Pest. I've got, oh, I want to play Harrow County. Um, I still have Sheol from last year, I, ISS Vanguard, um, Frost Haven's over there. Oh man, I shouldn't even show you what's under the table. Do you want to see what's under the table? I don't know if I should show you this. It's kind of messy, but let me show you what's under the table. This is kind of like the secret workings of the Game Warrior. This, this might be real dark. Hold on, let me, let me bring you down. Let me bring you down. Down low. How low can you go? Okay, here we go. What do you see under there? <laughs> right there, I see Frosthaven. Do you see Frosthaven? I see Forbidden Fortress. Yes, Robert, I need to play it. That's my fault. Down there is Aeon Trespass. That's Chronicles of Jurnagar. Over here, I believe we have too many bones. And the big one is Isofarian Guard. There might even be some others hidden back there. I think there's a role player game adventure. There's Burn Cycle and Adventure Tactics. At least. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Why don't you come on over, come stop by, and let's get some gaming done. Because I need some friends. I need some friends and I need some time to play all these magnificent games. Uh, okay, well, that was it. Kings of Ruin. I'll kind of move the camera around a little so you can see it over there. And now that you've seen Under the Table, the Hidden Lands and Secret, Secret, oh, RuneScape. Got RuneScape right over here. That's sitting over there. All right, you've seen enough. Enough, and I've talked enough. Um, have a great, great afternoon, day, whatever it is when you listen to this. If you have any thoughts, impressions, ideas, a funny story, anything along those lines, please, please, please share it. I love meeting new people and talking to them. And hopefully I'll meet some of you at SaltCon or where? Yes, Dice Tower West. Until next time, this has been Jason the Game Warrior. Have a great, great day and good, good gaming. Not just good gaming. Let's go better. Great gaming. Yeah. Thank you